Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about lamp repair, and we'd like to thank Jared Stackhouse for liking and sharing the podcast. Archaeologists found shells that were filled with moss and animal fat, and they think that ancient man were igniting these to create a little lamp for a cave. And they're dating ancient date- man, ancient and women, <laughs> and they they believe they're dating this to like seventy thousand BC. Wow, as the first lamps. Hmm. The Greeks had clay lamps that they had wicks in around six hundred BC, and Thomas Edison and Joseph Swan from England, mm-hmm. they invented the first incandescent table lamps in the eighteen seventies, and Edison's table lamp was the first commercially sold electric lamp in eighteen seventy nine. Wow. If you're making repairs to table or floor lamps, there's a variety of light bulb sockets and switches. Are you going to explain what a socket is? So the socket is that cylindrical shaped thing that... Well, I mean, it's where the bulb goes. (laughs) Right. So it's threaded and it can either be porcelain or metal or plastic. Right. And generally, you're going to have your hot and your neutral wire going to this, although you can have a keyless socket, which is operated by another socket or operated by a switch. So it doesn't have any... Why is it called keyless? Because it doesn't have a, a key. So in the old days, they called it the turn knob. They would call it a key because it was shaped like a key with mm. all these ornate designs on it. So they were pretty cool on the original lamps. <laughs> so if a socket has a knob, it would be a keyed socket. But not only can you have an on-off with a, a knob, but you can have a push-through style. So it has a plastic rod mm-hmm. that slides through the base of the socket for on and off. And then sockets can also have a dimmer knob or a pull chain. And then you can have a socket that controls a three-way bulb. So it's going to have multiple positions. And then if you have a socket that controls an additional socket or sockets, you have a three-terminal socket, which is different from a three-way socket. Wow, this just got complicated. (laughs) And then some lamps can have cluster sockets, which are two or three sockets on one body. And then you can also get sockets with side mounts. So it's kind of important if you're repairing a lamp that you take (laughs) take a look at your socket, so the part that the bulb screws into, or you just take it apart and bring it to the hardware store with you. You also have different size sockets, and the three main sizes are a standard bulb size. So this is the base of the light bulb. And the the main one was developed by Thomas Edison in 1909, and it's still the standard size. Mm -hmm. You have a medium base, which is smaller, and a candelabra base, which is even smaller. In these very old floor lamps, you can find these large sockets. And so they had a very large bulb with a big base, and they called it a mogul, Mm M-O-G-U-L. In Europe, they called it the Goliath. (laughs) And some of these mogul lamps, you would have this large center light bulb, and then three or four smaller bulbs attached to decorative arms, They usually had two switches. One would be controlling the main mogul bulb, and it was generally a three-way bulb, and the other switch would control the side bulbs, giving you 16 different combinations of light output on some of these. Wow, that's kind of crazy. And these were popular in the 1920s and the 1930s. (laughs) If you have a table lamp or a floor lamp that's not working, you generally just have to change that socket or replace the lamp cord. Right, because there's not that many parts with a lamp. Right, and they're very easy to fix. And you can take some of these old antique lamps, like my mom. You know, she was an antique dealer for Mm -hmm. years, and I would help her repair these old lamps that were just beautiful but they were dangerous. And, and just by changing a socket and the cord, you could take this thing. Well, we've and... done quite a few videos on that. Right. right. <laughs> right. Well, so, my grandma has one that was her mom's, and she had it from Italy. Yeah, so, interesting. I, mean, I don't think they ever turn it on. It yeah. just sits on the table. But <laughs> Right, but but you could take something like that, that that's so historic right. and, and make it safe just by changing the socket and the cord. But the first step, if you're troubleshooting a lamp that's not working, is remove the bulb and confirm that it's the bulb. So take that bulb, put it into another lamp, and mm-hmm. make sure the bulb's working. And some of these inexpensive lamps, or if you get some of these import light bulbs, the nipple on the bottom of the bulb, if, if it's not touching that metal contact inside the base of the socket, right. the bulb's not going to go on. Hmm. And that metal contact in most lamps is just a thin piece of metal. It's attached on one side, and it flexes, and there's a little bit of space on the bottom. And as you screw the bulb in... It makes contact and flexes, 
but over time or if you have light bulbs with a very large nipple on the bottom you can flatten out that contact and then when you remove it and screw in a different bulb it's just not making contact oh. and, and you think it's broke right but it's not so what you can do first is if you've got a bulb that works you screw it in it isn't working the first test you'd want to do is unplug the lamp make sure there's no electric on <laughs> take a small slotted screwdriver get it underneath that contact if it's one that moves you're going to get underneath it and pry it up and then screw your bulb in and then you'll know plug it back in turn it on you'll know whether it was just the contact that was the problem that's easy enough if that doesn't solve the problem it's usually the switch on the socket and your socket can either be brass nickel plated plastic or porcelain and the most popular is brass if you have a table lamp and you have a lampshade on it and a brass socket if you want to replace the socket first thing you're gonna do is remove the nut that holds that lampshade and it's called a finial why would they make a special name for that yeah. <laughs> you're gonna remove your shade and there's a metal piece it's called a lamp harp mm -hmm. that supports the shade and it's held in place with these sleeves that have to be lifted up squeeze the harp and lift it out make sure you unplug your lamp remove the light bulb and the socket comes apart you have an upper part of the shell and a bottom part that they call the cap so now we can get to the wires we need to take off that outer shell so you're going to squeeze the bottom part of that socket shell and many are going to have a spot marked squeeze <laughs> and you need to be able to pry that loose if you can't get it by hand you can take a small slotted screwdriver and lift it off and then this is going to have a cardboard insulation inside right. of it and now you have access to the socket and the screw terminals if your cord is in good shape and the plug is polarized so you have a more modern plug so one prong on that plug is narrow that's your hot side one prong is wide that's the neutral side mm -hmm. all you're going to do is replace this socket so unscrew the screws and remove the socket you want to mark the wire going to the brass colored screw that you're hot and you're going to have an underwriter's knot that you have to untie then remove the old socket base by unscrewing it from a threaded rod or a nipple and many of these are going to have a small set screw that you're going to have to unscrew it's going to be on the side once you remove that set screw then you just unscrew it and remove it to replace the socket you're going to pick your type of socket either an on off or a three-way socket you're going to separate the shell from the base so you have to take the new one apart and screw on that base first onto the nipple or the threaded rod and tighten the set screw if you have one this is on the lamp yes so you're connecting the base of the socket to the lamp you have to retie your underwriters knot so this is a knot that you're tying in the lamp cord and this keeps the wires from pulling off the screw terminals if someone were to trip on that power cord that knot keeps the pressure off the wires connected to the socket to prevent a shock hazard mm -hmm. or to short out your lamp on your power cord when it gets up into the lamp and comes out the top where the socket is mm -hmm. you actually pull that lamp cord apart there's a groove all the way down and at the end when you pull it apart now you have two individual wires a hot and a neutral and it's designed to keep that insulation completely wrapped around the wires right. and it's stranded wire and to create this underwriter's knot you're going to loop one side down and in front of the power cord the other wire goes down and behind and then you push the ends through the loop you're just going to pull it snug and that's going to sit inside the socket cap why is it called an underwriter's knot and not like a lamp knot so, <laughs> so in 1944 the insurance underwriters approved this knot as a safety device hmm. and so they call it the underwriter's <laughs> knot you're going to connect the hot side of the lamp wire to the brass screw and the neutral side to the silver screw how do you know on, which side is so on lamp wire one side is going to be smooth and when you pull it apart one side is ribbed so the side that's ribbed is going to the neutral side and that goes down to the wide side of the plug and if you can't tell what's smooth and what's ribbed you can take a multimeter set it to ohms and check for continuity so if you take your probes on a multimeter and you put one on the narrow plug and then you touch the two wires at the opposite end you're going to find out which one is connected to that narrow slot you're going to mark that as your hot wire and that hot smooth wire is going to go to the brass screw terminal hmm. once your wires are connected you're going to connect your socket shell make sure that that cardboard insulator is inside of it and snap the upper part onto the base you can put your bulb in now you're going to reconnect your lamp harp your shade and your finial and then you're going to plug it in and see if it works <laughs>
If your cord needs to be replaced, on most table lamps there's going to be a felt base that's glued to the bottom that's going to need to be removed. You can just pull that off and that's going to give you access to push the cord up through the center threaded rod. Mm -hmm. And you can use an all-purpose glue like an Elmer's glue to glue it back in place. Some lamps you're going to have the cord coming through the side of the base through a grommet and you can get replacements for that. For floor lamps it's not so easy to push it up through the body of the lamp. So what I would do is cut off the plug, remove the old socket, and tape the new cord, so the end of the new cord, to the bottom of the old cord where you cut off the plug, and then you're going to pull up and out the old cord through the top of the floor lamp, and that's going to pull your new cord up into it. Hmm. And that makes it a lot, a lot easier. Right. As I found out helping my mom, <laughs> it's very difficult sometimes to get these, push them up. Are all and, the power cords the same size? So you can get, so the most popular is 8 foot and 15 foot length. So for your table lamps, you know, again, I guess how far is your outlet right. from where your lamp is. But usually 8 foot and 15 foot are pretty popular. You can get some different size. Lamp cord is generally 18 gauge wire. Hmm. The new lamp cord is going to be polarized. So that plug is going to have a narrow blade and a wide blade. And the lamp sockets are designed to have the hot wire connected to the brass screw, the neutral to the silver. When you turn off the switch, the power's off before that metal contact in the socket. So when you turn it off, it's safe. You can't get a shock. If you were to wire the lamp backwards, so you connected the hot wire to the silver screw, the lamp's going to work. So the bulb is going to turn on and off when you switch it. Right. But that current is actually flowing through the threaded body of the socket. Hmm. If you turn off the lamp, it looks like it's off. But if you're unscrewing that bulb and you touch the base of the bulb, it's a shock hazard and if you remove the bulb and a kid runs up and takes a look at it and touches that socket you can get a shock and under the right conditions a shock can put your heart in fibrillation and potentially be deadly. Hmm. Another potential problem with reverse polarity are your outlets. If you've moved into an existing home that had a previous owner and let's say they've made some changes to the outlets and they wire the outlet incorrectly so they put the hot wire on the silver screw, the neutral wire on the brass screw, Wrong. you plug your lamp into this even though your lamp is correctly wired when you turn off the bulb, so it's going to turn on and off just like it's working properly but when you remove that, if your outlet has reverse polarity, now the socket is live and a potential shock hazard. Okay, so how do you know if your well, outlets are wired correctly? If you move into an existing home, I think one of the best testers that every homeowner should buy are one of these outlet testers. You plug it into the outlets and it's going to tell you whether it's polarized properly, it's going to tell you whether it's grounded, so both mm. of those for safety, and then you also have troubleshooting on most of these. When I was investing in real estate, Every one of my houses, the inspectors would check every outlet to make sure it was properly polarized because it's such a safety issue. Some of the top rated outlet testers are from Gardner Bender, Sperry, Klein, and Amprobe. It's A-M-P-R-O-B-E. If you have a floor lamp with a porcelain socket, it's usually going to have some type of metal bracket. It can be screwed onto a metal rod. It can be attached with screws. Some are going to have metal tabs that snap into place. Hmm. So if you have a porcelain socket, I would remove it first so that you can match it up. Lamps with the plastic sockets, they're going to have an upper body that's going to unscrew from the base, or you can have a nut that holds a lampshade in place. Once you remove that nut, then that top part has an outside thread. It also is threaded inside, and you have to unscrew that to get to the base and to the socket inside so that you can remove the wires. Fancy. If you have an old mogul lamp, you can convert that mogul size to a standard bulb with an adapter. So this is a socket that screws into that mogul base, and now you can put just a standard Edison-style bulb right into it. Three-way sockets control a three-way bulb, and you can replace any standard on-off socket with a three-way socket. So a three-way socket has two contacts inside the socket. One is touching the bottom of the bulb in the center, and that second contact touches the outside edge of the base of the light bulb. A three-way bulb has two filaments inside, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you have a three-way bulb that's a 50, 100, 150 watt bulb, it has a 50 watt filament and a 100 watt filament inside. So when you turn your three-way socket to the first position, so you click it on mm -hmm. the first position, that center contact lights that 50 watt filament. When you turn the knob to the second position, that center contact is off, 
and the edge contact is lighting the 100 watt filament. When you turn the knob to the third position, both contacts are turned on and you get 150 watts. No way. In 1933, Westinghouse came out with the first three-way bulb hmm. and lighting books from the 1920s suggest using a single 40 watt bulb for the living room and 20 watt bulbs for hallways. Wow, you would hate that. <laughs> Terrible. So what's wild is the old homes, if you're using kerosene lamps, mm -hmm. I was looking up the alumens coming off of a kerosene lamp. Mm -hmm. So the average house, if you're using just these kerosene lamps to read by, a flat wick kerosene lamp will give off 40 to 100 lumens. That's not a lot. Which is not much. So a 40 watt bulb is giving off four times the amount of light wow. that you're used to from these kerosene lamps. Outrageous. Amazing, amazing how dark old homes must have been. <laughs> if you have a lamp with a night light or you have an additional keyless socket and they're both operated by the main socket, so you have one turn knob, you have a three terminal socket, which is different than a three way socket. So with a three terminal socket, there's only one contact inside the main socket, okay. but you've got this additional screw. You'll have a brass screw, a black screw, and a silver screw on the socket. The hot wire from your lamp cord, that's going to your brass terminal. The neutral wire from your lamp cord is going to the silver screw terminal. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have two wires going to the other socket. The hot wire from that other socket is going to that black screw terminal. And then the neutral wire is going to be attached also to the silver screw terminal. Fancy. Yeah, it's, it's very unique. And you need to make sure that you order one of these. Most hardware stores aren't going to have it in their normal stock. Are they and, going to call you crazy? Yeah, and, and most people are going to be very confused. Most retailers really don't see this very often. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, a lot of the older lamps will have this. So you know, make sure that when you identify that you've got a lamp with two sockets that are operated by the one main socket, you have one knob, you have a three terminal socket, and they're probably going to have to special order it for you, or you're going to have to go online. You drew a nice picture of a lamp, too. Thank you. If you have a rotary switch on your what lamp... Is that? So this is one that just spins. It turns. So it's a small switch. It has a turn knob, and it has wire leads coming off of it rather than screw terminals. Okay. And there's different switches depending on the company and how they're wired. A basic two-wire switch for a single socket is going to have two black wires coming off this rotary switch. Hmm. You're going to connect the power or the hot side of your power cord to one of the black wires. The other black wire is going to go to the brass screw terminal on the socket. If you have two sockets or three sockets, a three-wire switch is going to have three wire leads. So the black wire is going to go to the hot on the lamp cord. The red wire generally goes to the first socket, it's going to go to the brass screw, mm -hmm. and then the blue wire is going to go to the second socket or a group of sockets. If you have multiple sockets, that second wire is going to go to a wire connector, and then you're going to have pigtails going to your additional sockets. Okay. If you have a lamp that you knocked over and you broke your bulb, there's a couple of ways to get the base of that bulb out. And this is primarily for incandescence. Mm -hmm. If you have LEDs or CFLs, there's going to be something to grab onto. They have something called a broken bulb extractor, and there's a couple of types. One type has a rubber tip on the end, mm -hmm. and you just jam this into the base, and it expands and grabs onto the, the, the rubber grabs the base of the light bulb, and it'll allow you to unscrew it. Another type looks like a pliers that you put in and you right. pull it apart and opens up and grabs mm -hmm. the inside and you can unscrew it. You can also just use needle nose pliers and grab the end of the socket and bend it. You can use a small slotted screwdriver and just bend that metal base, mm -hmm. grab it with the needle nose pliers and just start working it back and forth mm -hmm. and you can wiggle it till you unscrew it. And then a lot of guys love the potato. Yeah. You, you carve a potato the size of the opening of the base of the bulb mm -hmm. and you jam it in there and all those parts where the filament is and there's, there's usually a, a plastic piece in the bottom that will grab the potato and you just unscrew it. Nice. Some top rated lamp sockets and cords come from Westinghouse, Jandorf, it's J-A-N-D-O-R-F, and Leviton. 
You could buy kits that have everything included in it right. for lamp repair or individual parts. And if you go to the hardware store and they don't have your parts, just have them look it up. A lot of hardware stores have a wide selection. They just don't have it in the store, right. but they can special order it for you. And there's also a lot of these antique dealers online if you're looking for specialized parts. Do you have anything else to add? If you have antique lamps or expensive lamps that aren't working, you can easily repair them or you can make these old ones safe mm -hmm. just by replacing the power cord and the socket. And the key thing is just determining whether you just want an on-off socket or if you're going to be using it for a three-way bulb, you need a three-way socket. And then if you have the main socket that's operating additional light bulbs or additional keyless sockets, mm -hmm. you need to have a three-terminal socket. If you don't feel like doing this yourself, a lot of hardware stores do lamp right. repair. Yeah, it's a nice service. However, you're trusting that they know what they're doing. <laughs> Make sure you quiz them. <laughs> Ask them, do you know what the smooth side of the lamp cord means? <laughs> do you know what an underwriter's knot is? Yeah, show me. Be, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Do you be